Hello, this is a 8-port pre-programmed PABX telephone switch. It has an issue of low voltage. It doesn't call out to any of the switch. So if I plug in a, um, a telephone to any of the switch right here, there are about 8 ports here. If I try to call out to the other phone, it blinks light here, but it doesn't call ring out on the phone. Um, they've tried several phones on it and it's still the same. So with this um, star screwdriver, I'm going to remove the relevant screws that I need to so that I can repair this PABX. In case you haven't done already, I would like you to like and subscribe to, to the channel. I have a new, whole lot of videos on how to fix different kinds of office equipment from PABX to um, scanners, printers, CCTV cameras and all kinds of uh, um, office equipment. Just check my channels and subscribe to it to get uh, a whole lot of my videos there. So for, to be able to um, remove this uh, particular PABX, I have screws on the side which I'm going to remove right now so that I can get access to, to the main board. The areas that I'm going to be testing is um, the transformer to make sure the transformer is still okay and it uh, supplies the right voltage to, to the motherboard. Then I'm going to be checking the capacitors to make sure the capacitors are still okay. If the capacitors are swollen, that is an indicator that um, the proper voltage will be supplied so I will replace the capacitors. Then I'll be checking the chips also. I'll show you all, all of these uh, components one by one and then this is what it looks like inside this is the motherboard this motherboard is, is pretty dirty because it has been used uh, for a very long time because this uh, PABX switch uh, they are more or less a bit rugged I think this person has been using it for the past five six years and then this is the first time they are bringing in bringing it in for for repairs so I'm going to detach the the cables on it so that I can get access to to each and every component of this PABX so I'm carefully checking each and every component one by one the capacitors to make sure none of them is swollen and then I'm going to also be checking for any open circuit and then be soldering it to make sure that there is no And there's no open cycle this is the the transformer i was talking to you about and you can see the transformer rate in here i think this transformer is okay because it supplies the right voltage to the board i've not seen any bond on the uh, transformer or any sign of damage or any liquid coming out of the transformer so these are all the components i, I i'm going to be checking right now there are a whole lot of them uh with my brush i will just brush out the the dust inside and all kinds brush out the particles inside so that I can get a closer look at the, the motherboard and the chips to see if there's anyone uh, that I still need to restore that to the board because what happens to this is that over time the, the soldering on it uh, that is attaching the chips to the board they lose their strength and then the legs of, begin to pull out the legs of the chip that is attached to the board begin to pull out so in that case, what you have to do is just with your soldering iron, you resolder it back to the board and the problem is solved. But, but the first thing I have to do to be able to determine that is to get a closer look. And getting a closer look means I have to look, um, look at it without the dust and the particles, which is one of the reasons why I'm trying to clean it up. So with a soft brush, just like I'm um, using right now, you can just clean out the, the motherboard. You can see the signs of uh, burnt flame here. And so I'm going to check the component, the area where those flames is coming from. If it's coming from this um, programmable chips or any other part. But I know that is a part that I need to, to work on here. So I'm going to check each capacitor. These capacitors one by one also. see signs of this board bond is coming up to us it's pointing towards the, the right hand side so uh, I'm going to remove the board I want to detach the board from 
from the panel so that I can get a closer look. So each of these chips can, uh, can be the problem. So I will just remove one so that you can get a closer look at this chip. Okay, so I've been able to remove one of the chips right now. I'll show you. So this is a programmable chip. You can see. Uh, I I don't know if you'll be able to get the rating on it. There's something written on the chip. I don't know if you're able to get it. You can see. In case you want to replace it, you have to get um, get the numbers on it, and then that is what you're going to use to replace another one. But these kind of chips, um, they had to come by, especially in this part of the country so i i am going to be checking to make sure that um but I, i'm sure that the, the problem with this doesn't have to do with this uh chip at all because it, it works fine fine it powers on normally it's just that it can't call out to any other extension on it so what i'm suspecting on this is just um one of the legs um has pulled out of the board over time just like i said earlier the soldering on it lose their strength. The lead they use for soldering lose their strength, and then one of these legs pull out of the board. So what I will just do is just to trace the legs, we solder them back. I will try to remove the board now, and so that I can see what I'm talking to you about. At the other side, there are a lot of soldering on it. So over time, the solder, the so the uh, the lead that they use for the soldering lose their strength, and once they lose their strength, um, they begin to malfunction. So what, what I'll do right now is just to restore that back to the board. So I've been able to um, detach the, the motherboard from the panel. This is the motherboard I'll show you right now. Yeah, so this is the motherboard and this is what it looks like so this is what it looks like you can see all the spots if you okay i hope my camera will be able to get a closer look on it you can see all the spots they are you can see signs of rust on it and that signs of rust on it indicates that the that the lead that was used to sew that that those particular components to the to the motherboard they've lost their um their strength and then they've pulled out of the board you can see the signs here so in this case scenario what i'm going to do is just to get my soldering iron on my lead and my soldering paste and i'm going to resolder them back to the board and the problem will be solved so i gently resolder it back to the board what i'm holding in my hand right there is uh on my left hand side is uh, a lead and a sodium paste. So I'm going to gently resolder it back to the body. You can apply paste, sodium paste on it so that your sodium becomes neat. You don't want to bridge uh, two components that are not supposed to be bridged together. But with a sodium paste, you can avoid that. You can see uh, with my sodium paste, I'm going to apply. Uh, soldering paste on instead of get a bit soldering on on the board so I'm just going to apply the so um, the paste uh, generously on the areas where I will be soldering In case you haven't done already remember to like and subscribe to the channel like i told you earlier i have a whole lot of videos on how to fix different kinds of office equipment from printers to scanners to plotters to cameras to 
CCTV installation, PBS repair installation, printers, and, and all kinds of other I have been able to solder some part of it. Now I'm going to test for continuity right now. I'll test for continuity. I'll test for continuity to be sure all oh, the parts that are soldered are, are properly soldered. So I'm going to set my multimeter to read continuity. Then I'm going to do the tracing right now. I'm going to trace the light and I'll test for continuity. You can see testing this line. This, this line is okay. This line is let's see. This one is okay. So I'll trace the line. Remember, you have to trace it first to be sure they're on the same line for you to be able to test their continuity. So from here to here, it appears to be okay. I'm going to read each and every of the ports one by one to be sure that there is continuity in the relevant component of each of the ports. So uh, I've been able to test this board. The continuity is okay. And then um, we can see that this is the uh, each of the ports one by one. If I plug it to light now and I plug each of the phone to, to the port these bulbs will light up to show that there is line on it and then this component will work for each of the, the port on it so those are the components you have to check and the capacitors right here if any of them is swollen like this power capacitor here this is rated in 1000 by by 100 volt or 1000 US, um, UF by 100 volt I guess if it's swollen, you have to replace it. Mine is not swollen. The power is okay. I think this um, capacitors works with the power. So the power is okay. And I've been able to check each and every component. And I have um, cleaned out the board. So I'm going to clean out the panel also gently with my brush. I'm going to brush out the, the dust particles on the panel. Okay, so I gently replace the motherboard to it, back to its space and then remember to plug back all the uh, all the cables you detach from the motherboard, you remember to plug them back. The cables coming from the transformer to the motherboard and all other relevant cables that was detached initially. So I plug back all the cables. Right now, I will just brush out the dust and the dust on the, the top panel. 
then I'm going to close it back um, at Attach all the screws back to it and the problem is solved. Test it and then return to the customers. Problem is fixed. And so remember to like and subscribe to the channel. I have a whole lot of videos on how to repair trays, troubleshoot, all kinds of PABS, Panasonic PABS, IKE PABX and the rest. So this uh, the, the the motherboard is not seated properly so I want to reset the the motherboard properly. Okay, so I have screwed back or attached back the relevant screws to it. It is red right now. So, um, this particular PABX system is ready for testing. So, I'm going to see you some other time. Remember to like and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you some other time. Thank you.